Hello everybody. Today we have a special review. Well, I suppose you might have seen other reviews today anyway, but today we are covering Transformers Generation 1 Optimus Prime. Yeah. You might have a undersized printout of a scan of his instruction pamphlet, which I think had something on the back. Let me know for sure. A printout of a scan of his tech spec card. The second pair of missiles he comes with. Optimus Prime himself and some guest star figures. This is probably hard to read because the camera's focus settings are wacky for video. You can't adjust while shooting, I don't think. Function. Commander. Freedom is the right of all sentient beings. Now, while this has been opt this is Optimus's quote, the line never actually crossed, issued forth from Peter Cullen's lips until Movieverse Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime is the largest, strongest, and wisest of all Autobots. Oh, I guess as far as G1 goes, wisest might still hold true. This was 1984 before they introduced, say, Jetfire or Omega Supreme. <clears throat> anyway, feels his role is the protection of all life, including Earth life. Fights unceasingly. Sorry, fights unceasingly to defeat the Decepticons. Splits into three autonomous modules. Optimus Prime, the brain center known as the Commander. Two, Roller, the Autobot Scout Car, a spy who operates it up to 1,200 miles away. Though these distances and tonnage ratings and voltages and whatnot on the tech specs can be a little bit iffy, often seeming less than what they ought to be, and in some cases downright wimpy. And three, Autobot Headquarters, the combat deck equipped with a versatile mechanic slash artillery robot. Injury to one module is felt by the other two, which is Prime's main weakness. Mm-hmm. Let's see what he comes with. A set of four missiles. Roller's body. Wheels for roller. Gas pump, gas nozzle, gas hose, laser rifle, now known as Ion Blaster, and of course the cab robot and the trailer. There's four missiles, partly so two are spares, partly so you can go a little bit longer without having to go and pick up the missiles after firing. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the world of the Transformers, a world of heroic Autobots and evil Decepticons. Collect them all. To change your, 
our tractor trailer, simply follow these step by step instructions. Note, excessive force is not necessary. Separate tractor from trailer. <clears throat> Rotate rear wheels, aka the legs, straight down. I'm de there's a sort of automorph feature here that automatically pushes a gearing that automatically pushes them out when you bend. Bend feet up. Now I use Ultra Magnus to show that part because on my Optimus Prime there has been cutting and trimming to give him extra hip articulation. Turn Fender's arms out to the side. Rotate arms forward, arms swivel at shoulders and elbows. Now, I've marker tinted the windows on mine as well as painted the eyes blue. The windows originally had an orange and yellow tint. And the eyes were yellow, as you can see box art. Rotate roof panel up to reveal robot's head. Press into place. Attach fists to ends of arms with fingers facing inward. Fit laser blaster into hole in fist. Yeah, now that's a bit tricky. Because, as you can see here, there's a realistic handle, and the handle peg is where the ammo casing would be. In spite of all the various retools of Optimus Prime, well, you can store the fists in the seats that were meant for Diaclone pilot figures. I'll get to that. Oops. Um. In the meantime, Ultra Magnus will be used as a camera stand while I show you the insertion of the vests. Pull the ramp on his trailer down and then open it up. There's roller. I actually had to paint mine so it was blue. And there's peg holes for storing his accessories. These two are generally good for the right pull and pump. Well, for the pump and the nozzle, I mean. Rifle goes here. Now, I snapped the handle off of mine to give him proper clearance. As you can see. Looks much better that way. And, you know, arm swivel. We'll rotate up. Fairly nice. And because his fists plug in, he has wrist swivels. You can have him shooting like this, or... Like this. Now, I really wish both the ammo casing and the proper handle were... 5 millimeter pegs that would later become standard.
because then you could have him holding it by both to recreate a scene from War Dawn. Why is Ultra Magnus' trailer armor here? Well, it's going to be important. <clears throat> Let's unfold that pamphlet. From under the trailer, swing stabilizer their legs out. Drop down the tailgate. Pull sides of trailer apart and drop down. Well, I already did that step. But, you know, let's swing these supports out. The lack of any flippable support on the kingpin mechanism is hard. Pull mechanic slash artillery robot. That is not the original rubber hose either. I just used the length of cord from dead headphones because, hey, why waste material? Anyway. Now you see that square column on the artillery robot? These launchers do fire, albeit the strings are eco or no, I might have gotten around to replacing them with stronger ones. You know, these load in there to act as missiles or as gun barrels. And again, it has a cockpit. This clock can open and to close, by the way. Pull mechanic art slash artillery robot up, swing radar dish and robotic claw into position, fit rockets into holes in front of robot assembly, see figure C. You can swivel robot in all directions. To make roller scout car, attach wheels with large holes facing away from car onto the posts on car chassis. Fit one end of hose into nozzle, fit its other end into gas pump, fit post on gas pump into hole on car, although I prefer to leave them in here because you can fill the other Autobots up that way. This is a long review, but I have a lot of stuff I wanted to cover. To launch roller on an Autobot mission, Slide launcher back until it locks into place. Fit two rear posts on holes into the launcher until car locks into place. Press lever behind the robot's base. Yeah, partly due to weakened springs, even with the blocker tabs. Oops. Oops, cut. The spring in mine is still weak. And also there's the fact that my roller, there are some of his wheels do not like to roll well. Oh, they just do not at all, and it is annoying. But you get the idea. Yeah, see, they partly weaken the springs and also install blocker tabs. This launcher, by the way, can also incorporate, it also works with a standard Autobot car. Like Wheeljack. Uh, 
heck with this monocle thing was um and I think I actually have better luck launching these than I do roller even with the issues with the spring wheel jack by the way oh, damn it stands a lot better if you manage to slide his feet out all the way yeah. all right now let's see no, that did not work. Yeah. Oh, you get the point. These have five millimeter posts. You can fuel wheel jack. You can have anybody with compatible peg holes fueling him, whatever. Or suits you. Now, oh, remember what I said about Diaclone figures? Yeah, see, the Transformers line was made, originally made up of toys taken from other lines. In the case of mo many of the Autobots, as well as the original vanilla F-15 as opposed to with mod with F-15 parts but the base for that still came from Diaclone you know. which was about piloted mech robots and that would be why They have cockpits. It was for these human pilot figures with magnetic feet. Mine does not, my one figure does not have them, and it may actually be a bootleg, but I've got magnets on the way in the mail. Anyway, see, you can sit pilots there. You can sit. Pilots here. My Optimus Prime is missing some stickers that were never applied, I don't think, on both the trailer and the rain a lot like the arms. You know, there's a seat for them there. They can sit in roller. There's a seat for them there. And of course. A seat in the artillery robot. Doesn't that look cool? Yeah. Now, back to the tech spec. I actually meant to do this at the start. The tech specs have a sort of wonky bar graph where only the points on these lines meaning anything. But it's covered in red scribble. Oh, so that kids can have the fun of decoding it with a special decoder piece. I guess I'm not sure how well this will show up on camera, but. He has a 10 in strength. Yeah, this is Cybertron Rail Alert since he has red windshields. I'm using him as my tech spec to cutter. He has a 10 in strength, a 10 in intelligence, An eight in speed. A ten in endurance. 
a 10 in rank, a 10 in courage, an 8 in firepower, and a 10 in skill, you know, because hey, you do not get to be the leader of the guys fighting against the Decepticons and the untalented. But we are not totally done. No. Yeah. By the way, you may have noticed that Optimus has knees, which totally rocks. Um. We're not done. There's a couple of square holes on the trailer and for the artillery robots. Are columns to step, go through. This gives you the option of giving Optimus a couple different attack modes. Uh, you know, this of course works in truck mode too. He's only got his hip articulation is for his transformation, but you can still have fun with it. He's got nice arm articulation, not like Prowl or Jazz good, but it's still decent, especially f considering the time. He's got knees, which have, which are there. J us, so he has articulation. That's cool. He has wrist swivels due to removable fists. Those can get lost, as can the missiles and whatnot, but still cool. Yeah. Worth getting him? Yes. Oh, and one more note about the Diet Clone pilots and their magnetic feet. That would be why. The original releases of Optimus Prime, as well as the original Diaclone Battle Convoy, he came from. You know, the, you know what he originally was. That's why the trailer had no plates. You know, Ultra Magnus's cab is basically just Optimus with longer axle. Oh, and the bigger nuts. This may actually be a Magnus version Optimus cab. Well, anyway, you can remove Optimus's fists. And all that. And, you know, due to being the same cab robot, he totally, totally fits into Ultra Magnus's trailer armor. And doesn't look half bad in it. Well, that's the video. So, should you get Generation 1 Optimus Prime?